This could, could all go horribly wrong at any minute. And the rubber chicken says... <laughs> <laughs> oh, sometimes basketball is better than life, but what do I know? I'm just a rubber chicken. Well, a wise old bird you are, because that's a great intro to this week's Rantcast number 77, entitled North Carolina Beats Duke. <laughs> yes, and no slaps. Not one, not one slap, not even a, no, nothing. <laughs> Zippo! And of course, uh, should we talk about the slap? Huh? No, we're not going to talk long about the slap. I talked about the slap on about 20 radio shows this week. I was doing uh, promos uh, for the new tour. You can go online, uh, lewisblack.com. I'm going to push this again because it's the only thing that seems to be left is me in a sandwich board wandering about in the desert, kind of going, woo woo, coming to town. Uh, if you go to lewisblack.com, uh, you can get all of the dates that I'll be doing. Uh, you can join the fan club. Yep, I'm going to repeat it again and get the best seats in the house. It's the only way we've got to beat the scalpers, all right? That's it. Going to wrap that up because, boy, oh, boy, I had to keep talking and talking and talking. No one would let it go. What about the slap? What about the slap? What about the slap? Blah, 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 blah. Well... Uh, I only have a few thoughts. I, I talked about it the night that uh, I did a show in Red Bank, New Jersey. I, I basically, I didn't really want to talk about it. After you talking about it twice, there's too much talk about it. It was, everybody talked about it. It's all been said, and now it's the end of the week, and it's already done, and Will Smith has moved on, and he's left the Academy to make bigger and better films. <laughs> yeah, so there's the punishment there. Uh, Chris Rock is selling more tickets, and uh, so I had spent the week looking for a, a big celebrity to slap me. That was my joke about it. Whack, 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 whack. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. And then uh, um, others really said it uh, over and over again. Everybody said it. Oh, every comic. And then, uh, will you be, uh, do you think this will affect you when you go on stage? What, what are you talking will affect me? What, am I supposed to walk on stage thinking that somebody's going to run up and slap me? I just couldn't see Will Smith as kind of the, oh, God, I have waited all my life for Will Smith to go slap a comic, and now I've been given the freedom to? No. I do think that um, it pr probably opens up for the, 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 uh, the, uh, the heckling, uh, the, you know, spigot. I'm sure it does that, but um, hopefully it doesn't. They're, they're comics who seem to be worried about it. Uh, I don't deal in clubs, so that I'm, uh, you know, it, they, but they certainly at, at times are, are much better, uh, uh, more, more security than they do at the um, at the at the uh, at the Academy Awards. It's unbelievable, unbelievable. He gets up. I, I don't know how to, what do you say about this, really, in the end? I'm, you, you know, in terms of, he, it, it, it's beyond, it literally, it's a horrible thing that he did, but it's also, it's beyond, way beyond satire. He, he protected his family from a bad joke. What, what, do you, what else do you need to say? Okay. You don't think there's a some sort of a you know there's some need for some sort of a psychiatric sit down? It's a bad joke. Um, it's it's an, you know that was what it was. So he told a bad joke, then he did something that was even worse by slapping him, and then even more so than that was is that then uh, Will Smith gave the the, the the most bizarre speech in the history of bizarre speech. Does I, I just. They, they should have given him the hook. They should have said, shh. They should have, somebody should have come up and just put the, if you're going to slap somebody, why can't you put your hand over his mouth after that? But why would they let him on the stage after that? Why, I mean, what, what, you know, it, just seriously, they talk about the, oh boy, the, uh, the politics of these people. It's not the politics of these people. These people are crazy. Did we learn that? Did we at least learn that from what happened out there in the Academy Awards? That, that in many ways, uh, Hollywood at times, it, 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 not at times, but Hollywood is uh, uh, an outpatient clinic. And uh, they stand up and applaud him after that, I'm a vessel of love, a vessel of love who's slapping. Okay, that's enough. That's enough talking about that.
but that's what I've got. So the people go, well, what did you have to say about it? Well, that's what I had to say about it. There's probably a lot more that I could say about it, um, but it's been said. We're driving at this point down uh, 17 in New York State, um, and I don't know if you can see it through the window, but um, yeah, uh, it's in April, and there's uh, uh, snow. It's snowing. There's, uh, it's been coming down. It's not a heavy snow, but it's enough to make you go, what the fuck is happening out there? It's April. Can we get a break? Can we move on? Is this going to continue? They keep saying, oh, no, it's coming. I think they're lying. Uh, this is, you know, just, uh, it's unbelievable. It looks like February out there. And that does not lift the spirits. But this does. Yes, sir, Bob. Uh, I'm a little tuckered out. Uh, I stayed up last night. I did something I never do, um, which is I had them uh, DVR the game. I did not know who won the game. I had no clue. Uh, everyone around me was very, uh, you know, they were really gave me space and didn't talk about the game. And uh, so I could watch it and uh, saw really uh, the, the great triumph. <laughs> Sorry, Bob. Talk about avoiding reality. There's nothing better than basketball and certainly nothing better than the, the rivalry between North Carolina. They go on about that enough that it must drive you crazy. Um, it is if you're a, if you went to Chapel Hill or you went to Duke, it is ingrained in you. Uh, it's a part. It becomes a, like it becomes. It's like you go there, and it's like they, they. they it's like they. It's almost as if they give you a a, a shot that uh, ingrains in you that you, you will root against Duke for the rest of your life, and that's and then Dukies will root against those of us from North Carolina. And uh, it was a tremendous triumph last night. Nothing gives me more joy than when we beat them. Shashevsky, to beat him, now they're with the, the, from the time that he entered uh, until now, they played 100 games, North Carolina and Duke. We split 50-50. That's perfect. It's the way it should be. Uh, this team, I did, look, I, I I follow North Carolina basketball a chunk. I, I'm always kind of the guy, well, I don't think they could do it. I, I, this year, certainly not. Um, I watched games, I thought, wow, this team can't get it together. And uh, and I was I was hoping that they wouldn't fire UB Davis because I really like him as a coach. And I know that none of this will interest many of you, but uh, it's just, uh, this is this is really what I had. This was my, the, the escape valve from what has been just nothing but, you know, as we all know, madness. Uh, and I hope it worked for some of you as an escape. The, uh, it's the last thing I got is March Madness is in terms of the sports. And now, um, I, and I feel like uh, this was winning the championship, beating Duke. You know, that it, it, this is an afterthought playing Kansas, really. I feel like the victory has already been in hand. And those of us who care about North Carolina basketball have already moved on and uh, have to start working on next year um, because it's all I got. My other teams are horrific. But, I, but to get one team like that that does that much winning, I finally realized, you know, I can't really complain about these other teams. Um, I've got a, you know, I've basically have had a dynasty and, uh, and many people in, uh, in uh, the, the world of sports, you know, it, you know, it don't ever even get close to one. So I'm going to shut up about, no, I'm not. I'm going to continue to bitch about the other teams that I have to root for, but I certainly will tone it down a little. So hopefully um, we'll have the uh, Supreme Court uh, nomination will be, will will pass and maybe and then they'll be, it'll be bipartisan. Three people vote from the Republicans and they call it bipartisan. That's nonsense. And how they how they vote against her is beyond me. After you vote for the others that you voted for over the past few years, it's ridiculous. And you voted her, you know, pretty much in to be a federal court judge. I, I just I can't even. I, I don't know what they want, what you want, what they what they want from her, um, but but it's it's time to to vote her in, and for us to move on and uh, get on to the five million other problems that we have. Uh, the one thing you'll notice, or that, or that I noticed, and that I've done a bit of, I'm not sure in ter terms of the way we edit this this rantcast, but there's now from coming in in the rants is uh, the. Uh, more of the division between uh, 
people who are upset about uh, the former leader, people upset about uh, the new leader. So it's really been uh, a, a lot of people are yelling and screaming. And if you're going to send in stuff, you know, put put some, uh, don't just say, you know, they've been doing this or they've been doing that. Just say what it is specifically, all right? Don't Don't just go, well, I think that they've been up to no good, all right? He's got, there was one in this last thing about, they, they basically say that, that Biden has certain policies, or as I call them, the ghost of Christmas past, has certain policies. And um, that, you know, and we'll name what the policies are and how you think it affected it, us, okay? Because we got basically, until you get both parties to deal with each other in terms of reality, we've got nothing to discuss. There's nothing to talk about, okay? It's, and that sound that you're hearing is the sound of my brain looking for a real thought, looking for harmony in a nation that is just distraught. Huh? Huh? Wake up. They're, they're, they're doing that. I don't care. We haven't got time. All right? It, you know, you can talk about a, a lot of this stuff all you want. On the list of shit we got to worry about, no. All right? If you think there's a way in which to actually get the gas prices lower, tell us. Tell me how. Tell, tell people. Don't keep it a secret. If I'm elected, no. Fuck you. Now we need to know. I've repeated this again and again and again. I'm tired of it. And uh, I really had just a great week, and I'm just tired because I had to stay up really late trying to pull in a victory I'm, I'm on a tape. And it's, it's not live. It's taped. You know how hard it is? to pull in a victory when something is taped. When it's live, you can get down in it and you're part of it. But when it's taped, it's already happened. And you're just shouting in the background. And I have a show to do tonight uh, in Huntington. And next week, look, folks, I am coming to uh, uh, Atlanta. I'm coming to uh, Charleston. I'm coming to, uh, the, don't tell me, son of a gun, at Chattanooga. So it's Chattanooga, Atlanta, Charleston. That's the way it's rolling next weekend, and I, I hope you can join us. I hope the folks in uh, Atlanta know that uh, there are plenty of great seats left. They're unbelievable. You can bring your whole family and have rows. You can pretend like you're on an airplane and sleep through the set and have a whole row to sleep in. Um, it's, uh, I'm hoping that, the, uh, that um, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a glitch in the system and that uh, the folks will show up, um, and I'm sure they will. And if not, we're going to have a good time anyway, so fuck it, because I hear laughter and no one is there. It's, uh, it's a, uh, it's, it's, you know, and if spring comes, I think everything will make a difference. And I, yeah, I, I, I am trying really to find a way to, uh, if anyone knows how uh, you're supposed to get across that someone is coming to town in certain places, it, I sell out, and it, it, there's no rhyme or reason to uh, the way ticket sales are going now. And, um, and that really has become a conundrum, a word that I, uh, it, it really is the name of a great white wine if you're looking for one. I think I've rattled on enough because I keep looking for something important to say and I have nothing to say, except that we won. And, um, and I need to take a nap and you need to get back on track, onto your day. I think you're gonna enjoy a uh, lot of what was uh, what came through in terms of the rants, there were some spectacular ones, even some of the shortest ones. Uh, what I'm noticing now is is that uh, the audiences that are showing up are sending in some things that are just terrific. And uh, once again, I'm going to just say it: is tighten up the uh, and I and I and I hate to say it, tighten up the um, the rants. If you want to get it all out, get it all out there. But, but basically, direct me on how you want it edited, okay? Um, because uh, I, I hate to, uh, to edit the work that you've done. Um, it is always a pleasure to read it. It is always a pleasure to spend time with you. And, uh, and hopefully spring comes soon. Wherever you are, I hope it's spring. It was spring last night when we won the game. And then I woke up and it was snowing again. Fuck. What are you going to do? The Lewis Black's Rantcast is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Have you ever checked your phone's usage logs and been completely shocked to see how much time you spend on it? Well, in fact, you probably don't even need to actually check to realize you spend too much time on your phone. Did you know that every move of that time is collected by your phone carrier? 
They say it's so that they can better understand your interests. But really, all they want is to sell your activity to advertisers. They want to know everywhere you go on that phone so they can make more money from you. Which is why I suggest you use ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN is an app that prevents your phone carrier from being able to see the sites you visit and sell it off to third parties. All it takes is one tap of a button and all of your network data gets encrypted and rerouted through ExpressVPN's secure servers for ultimate privacy. Not only does it shield your web browsing, ExpressVPN protects all of your network data so you can stay private even when using your favorite apps. Whether you're on an iPhone, an Android, or even a tablet user, ExpressVPN works on all your devices. The best part is one subscription can be used on up to five devices at the same time, so your entire family can be covered by using ExpressVPN. When your phone carrier tracks you, that's a gross invasion of privacy. You can either keep letting them cash in on you or visit expressvpn.com slash black to get the same VPN I use. Take back your online privacy today and use my link to get three extra months free. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash black. Expressvpn.com slash black. We're coming to you live, as uh, Jeff said, from the uh, from Red Bank, New Jersey, the Count Basie Center for the Arts. Red Bank is a nice little, uh, beautiful little community that is never warm when I come here. <laughs> never. It's really, uh, it's beautiful and it's really uh, uh, almost bucolic in its fashion and uh, has some great restaurants and some uh, wonderful folks live here and um, it's, it's always a delight except it's fucking cold! <laughs> it's not that cold today. today it's like, oh, I was going, oh, it's going to be 50, 52 here and then I get here and that's a fucking lie. <laughs> but if you're ever heading toward um, uh, Atlantic City, this is a, a stop along the way, and it's a, you should take a, take a detour and take a look. Yeah, what's real estate here now? $12 billion, I guess. <laughs> yeah, really, really, yeah, I bet it is. I bet they're fucking you now, huh? You get those cards every day. Boy, we really want, you know, in the neighborhood, two, two houses down, they sold their place, and they ended up, they're now living in, in Paris in a mansion. It's the happiest they've ever been. And then some. <laughs> you know, you'll find out that these, and, and even living here in this beautiful place, these, these fucks are so bitter, it's spectacular. <laughs> Even living someplace, we're gonna move there and it'll be really nice and I'll be happy. No, not even close. <laughs> I knew this was gonna be, fuck this place. God damn it, it's too nice. God damn it. So this is from Michael Fonder. He's with us tonight. When today's, being April Fool's Day, your fucking birthday and no one ever believes you. It's really, I'd never thought of that. Even in elementary school, my mom had to bring in my birth certificate. <laughs> because the teacher wouldn't let me pass cupcakes to the class on April 1st without it. <laughs> wow, that sucks. <laughs> I didn't hear, I, you know, it was funny today, I didn't hear any, uh, um, the only thing, I was on the, doing radio again today, and the only time anything came across during the radio was the guy said, how do I know you're Lewis Black? It's April Fool's Day. I go, well, well great, maybe I'm not. Can we, maybe we don't have to do the interview. <laughs> this is from Heather Corentang, Corentang, I hope I got that right. Now, and Heather, why does every guy in the audience look like you? Um, Heather. <laughs> 
<laughs> Heather, I'm looking. Heather, uh, f fuck you. Okay. And I mean that in a, in a very affectionate way. I'm looking at the audience, I'm looking at people in the audience, they're looking at the guys in the audience, they don't look like me. And do you say balding? Okay, Heather? Um, okay, not yet, Heather. It's going, but not balding, okay? <laughs> All right? I do a good job of the coverage, but whatever hair is left looks like it was combed with a balloon. Okay, that's funny. If, if you think it, I, my hair looks like it's combed with a balloon, Heather, um, I'd have to say, go fuck yourself again. <laughs> I have two brushes that I use. Uh, they have different names. And, uh, I, and if I didn't, I, and, but I think that that's funny, but glasses, I wear glasses, wearing jeans. I don't wear jeans on stage, why? because I respect my audience. And I think that I have to look better than my audience. <laughs> I do. I'm not asking my audience to dress up. A black shirt, is this a black shirt, Heather? No, it's not. Uh, Jeff called it salmon. I call it pink. <laughs> Sneakers, no, Heather. These are fucking shoes, <laughs> all right? So you're 0 for 6. <laughs> Sweating and miserable. Okay? I haven't sweat at all. One of the great things I do as a performer is I don't fucking sweat. Even when it's hot as fuck, I don't sweat. But you know why? Because I, I, when I, if I'm going to sweat, I actually, before a show, if it's going to be really hot, I will have my sweat glands removed and then surgically put back in. <laughs> and I play misery. I am not miserable. So, Heather? Um, that was not fair and uncalled for. And now I will be mildly depressed tonight. I hope you're fucking happy wherever you're fucking sitting. <laughs> wow. You, you better make sure nobody knows, you know, the guys who are sitting around you, you better fucking hide. <laughs> this is from Giggle Chick. You probably should have given your name, we should have faked your name too, Heather. <laughs> Do you think Demi Moore is pissed that her G.I. Jane look is tainted by alopecia now? <laughs> I'd forgotten they even made the movie. I did, I had to ask, I, I asked Jeff, what the fuck is G.I. Jane? And then he went, the Demi Moore movie. Oh yeah, that's right, oh good. I didn't go. Jonathan Zoyce, what the fuck exactly is an influencer? What do they even influence besides confusion and or masturbation? Robert Gianetta, for the love of God, it cost me a hundred bucks in gas to see you. <laughs> uh, stay home tomorrow. You know, I hope it was worth it. If it makes you feel any better, Robert, I'm, I'm here in a tour bus. Okay, Robert? In order for me to come here, I need to make about, about $180,000 tonight. <laughs> My tour bus gets three miles, three miles to the gallon, okay? All right? So I don't, you can talk to me all you want about driving a car. And whenever you do, just think, holy fuck, losing a tour bus. <laughs> we drive to Syracuse tomorrow and I'm thinking of stopping halfway and telling people to just, you know, and watch me in the bus and we'll live stream it. <laughs> this is from uh, Robin Davison. Um, 
And I'm not going to read all of it. I'm just going to read the first few said in three. I've been sending great rants for some time now and have not heard mine used. I think this may be the one you want to share. This rant is for whomever wants to listen, but everyone should listen. I'm a nurse for 30 years. I've seen it all. I'm 63 now and can feel the, that phrase that almost all the old people would say to me as I was doing some caring tasks for them that they thought no human should have to do. Don't get old. I feel this all too well. But the lesson I chose to leave with all of you is an important one that is rarely spoken of. The lesson I mean is the lesson of thank you. That part is said in a Mr. Rogers voice, which uh, I don't do. <laughs> the thank you for all the little things all day, every day, are the most important ones, truly, because those are the ones people remember in their souls. The constant thankfulness for you and your presence on this earth. One more thing that is fucking important for me to pass on before I die about thank you is this. You never say thank you to someone you love after sex. <laughs> it's a fucking insult. They didn't have sex with you like a whore. They made love to you as your spouse or boyfriend or girlfriend or lover. But if you say thank you to them for making love, it is the most bitter insult because you have shown what it is to you. It's a thank you for a job that you will or have paid for in some fucking way. Wow. Just needed to pass that on. Before I die, after hearing so many old people near death talking about life, this stands out to me as something everyone should hear. I'm sure many will find ways to dispute this, not here in Red Bank. I'm sure many will find ways to dispute this. Well, fuck them too. This is from Doug Walsh. This is, uh, I'm retired, and this is last year I started driving a school bus. I'm sure you heard there's a shortage of school bus drivers, so I thought I would help out the cause. Good for you, Doug. And that, I mean, that's, uh, that's no mean feat to get in there. I, I stopped driving just driving. I can't imagine driving with a bunch of kids. They'd, they'd all be dead the first day. <laughs> After driving for over a year, I can tell you the one thing that pisses me off the most. Every day, and I mean every fucking day, someone drives right past me while I'm stopped with my red lights on. I honk the horn, and most of these assholes don't even look. They are too busy texting or talking on their phones. I personally witnessed a kid getting hit by a car, and I still have nightmares. Many of the same assholes are parents. It seems like the only way they will care is if their kid gets hit. What the fuck? The, the one thing when you do drive... In, uh, in a tour bus is when you look down is how many people on a fucking highway are, are texting while they're driving at 60 miles an hour. I, it's just, it's beyond belief. Bridget Murphy. Um, New Jersey is the last state in the union to prohibit self-serve gas. It's really so expected. But they state, that, but the state may approve it now only because there aren't enough employees to work the pumps. In all seriousness, there are residents of New Jersey who do not know how to pump their own gas. That's, that's, that's spectacular. It, it may actually get worse. No alcohol sold in supermarkets or convenience stores, with some exceptions in wealthy areas. Mm -hmm. Like the Whole Foods just up Route 35 in Middleton, pointing the finger. The liquor store owners go crazy when there's talk of allowing beer and wine to be sold elsewhere. When I go to other states, it's like visiting a foreign country. <laughs> ah, the ease of purchasing booze in the same store where I can buy food in 2022. First world problems I know, but the struggle is real in New Jersey. <laughs> and I'm going to end with this because... The, it's great, there's, there's no, I didn't even know this was a thing. Brett, Brett Blatt, who's here, said, welcome to Jersey, settle the debate, please. Pork roll or Taylor ham? <laughs> 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 
Jennifer Sear pointed this out quite well. Oh my fucking God. I'm from South Jersey and we have a special meat here called pork roll. On the package, it says Taylor's pork roll. So knowing this fact, why in the fuckity fuck do people from North Jersey call it fucking Taylor Ham? There's no goddamn such thing, you fucking idiots. What the actual fuck? It's fucking pork roll. For fuck's sake, learn how to read the package, and maybe we in South Jersey would be able to stop sending all of our money north. This is why we need to be two separate goddamn states. Leave the idiots in the north to fend for themselves. <laughs> and that those of us from the South Jersey, and where we actually have brains, <laughs> tend to our resorts, blueberries, tomatoes, all to ourselves, and leave us alone. I'll be at the Red Bank Show. Thanks for reading this. <laughs> well, thanks for writing it. That is what we should be fighting about. I don't need, I don't need what the, 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 uh, the, 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 I don't need people yelling about Trump and I don't need people yelling about Biden. I need people yelling about pork roll and ham. That's what I need. That's, that's the fucking reason to divide a state up. <laughs> Absolutely. I want you to know it's been a pleasure spending time with you. Okay? Thanks to everybody who's watching at home. Um, and uh, we'll be coming to you from Syracuse, and then on uh, Sunday night we'll be in Huntington. Uh, next week we're in Atlanta. Please keep sending the rants in. Couldn't have had more fun tonight. Please take care of each other. That's the most important thing. Good night, Red Bank. This episode is brought to you by Chime. You already know that Chime is out to revolutionize banking for the average person. They're already taking control back from the big banks by building a network of fee-free ATMs around the country, as well as fighting overdraft fees. Now they want to help you get your money faster because nobody likes waiting on a paycheck, especially when it's your money. With Chime Direct Deposit, you can get your paycheck up to two days early. That's up to two more days to save, pay bills, and avoid those fees Chime is always fighting. But Chime is more than just about getting paid early. It's also an award-winning mobile app, checking account, debit card, and optional savings account, all designed to help you control your money and not give it to the big banks. So what are you waiting for? Hopefully not your paycheck. Get started with Chime today. Applying for a free account takes less than two minutes. Get started at Chime.com slash Lewis. That's Chime.com slash Lewis. Banking services and debit card provided by the Bancor Bank or Stride Bank North America. Members FDIC. Early access to direct deposit funds depends on payer. We're at the Krauss Heinz Theater in Syracuse, New York. And, um, Syracuse is a, is a frosty little town. We've come into Syracuse and it's generally so fucking cold we flee. Um, it has a... Uh, this, this group tonight uh, that's with me seems to have a bone to pick with their university, but many, many people understand uh, that one of the, the great universities in America, the University of Syracuse, is here, and it's... Uh,
And it truly is. It's one of the great uh, private universities in, uh, in New York State and continues to grow and prosper and, um, uh, and uh, hopefully we'll have a better basketball season next year. <laughs> and, um, but still will not beat the, the great, great team that is the this is the University of North Carolina that you will no no oh oh the sticks and stones it, it doesn't matter we know our position and we know how to thrash you and uh, I really uh, they've been very good this evening after I told them that if they fucked up I, I would leave because my team is playing tonight uh, I'm going to get right to this um, because we've got some, <laughs> some really interesting ones here. They're, this is from Kelly Brauchel or Brauchel. I bought a balcony box ticket thinking it would make me feel grand and regal. <laughs> Instead, here I am on some red, crusty office chair. <laughs> that, oh, wait that probably has cum stains older than me. <laughs> it even has wheels on it. <laughs> Syracuse, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm gonna read these two back to back. If they're true, this is phenomenal. If, they're, if they made them up, this is phenomenal. <laughs> This is a husband and wife. Um, Tiffany Rogers said, please help me. Here's my rant. My husband makes me go out with him and his stupid friends. We don't even fucking get along. The only thing getting th me through this tonight is your humor. And other than that, I want to jump off the upper balcony. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for providing a night out, a fun night out, and taking my mind off the person sitting next to me. <laughs> and then Jeffrey Rogers, I'm sitting at your show in Syracuse, New York. This is the husband <laughs> trying to hide this message from my wife. <laughs> we dislike one another, but still do things in public because we have a lot of the same friends. It's cheaper to keep her. <laughs> At this point, more alcohol is my only saving grace. Thank you for your humor tonight. It was much needed to assist me through the evening. Time to black out. If I, but if I pause here and then all of a sudden you hear a, somebody just leapt from the, boom! <laughs> Josh Cronland, I'm gonna cut this off a little, Josh, because it really reads better this way. <laughs> it be, it, I can't stand avocado toast. Not the food itself, I like the food. It's the people who order it. <laughs> Linda Schnitt, Schnittger, please tell my husband not to squeeze the toothpaste from the middle of the tube. <laughs> hey, fucker! Don't squeeze the toothpaste from the middle of the tube, okay? Or buy your own. Buy your own and leave it around. And then you can squeeze the fuck out of it any way you want. Okay? If it's important to you from squeeze it from the middle, fuck it. You don't have to take orders. Son of a bitch, get your own tube, go crazy. <laughs> Jeffrey Schauberg, don't you hate pants? <laughs> no, no, Jeffrey. In a night like this, when the temperature is just beginning to plummet, they're kind of fun. <laughs> I don't know if this is true or not. I don't really care. It's, this is really why I do this. Uh, Jay Pierce has written this. Ask watches. Sasquatch, probably. 
Yeah, well, okay. <laughs> wow, that, well, are you the sister to the one who was talking over there? <laughs> That's, you're right about, I, did I mispronounce it? Ask Quatch? Ask, I mean, I love the probably. No, I will. I just, I hated to mispronounce Asquatch. I'd never fucking heard of it. I mean, in New York City, we don't have Asquatch. Asquatches are decorated deer asses. You don't? Well, why would he bring it up? I need direction? <laughs> well, okay, I'm going to move on. I, I just, I'm sorry, those of you couldn't hear it at home, but that was just, I had to pursue it. So there are these asquatches, which really aren't in Syracuse. They're decorated deer asses, something that you've, uh, I guess, uh, if for those of you who are thinking of buying a wedding gift, they're selling for hundreds of dollars for a dead deer's ass that looks like an old wizard with birth defects. I don't know where the ass watches are, but Google it, because I've not got the time for this shit. Okay, this is Brooke Wilson and follows from some of my act this evening. So my roommate is the most life-sucking horror I've ever had to endure. She has a cat, Gaia, or Gaia? Gaia. Gaia? Okay. This bitch, it peed on my fucking bed, not once, but twice. And her owner, the life-sucking horror, told me when I said it was time to pay up, says, if it's, my, if it's my cat's fault, it certainly is not mine. I swear to God, it took all of me not to slap the bitch. <laughs> to add on, she doesn't buy groceries. She eats all of my stuff, uses all of my plates and cooking materials, and then doesn't wash dishes or replace my food. Ooh, I think the cat thing is really low on this totem pole. <laughs> Did you just, just did the cat was the top of the list? I think you got to work this order out again. <laughs> Eventually, yesterday, I told her she had to go, and she simply said no, and said she was a scapegoat, <laughs> and I was bipolar. <laughs> I'm writing this to take out my anger versus getting arrested. <laughs> well, Brooke, I'm glad I could help, and I would say, uh, leave her there and find another apartment. <laughs> just, you know. And, um, and don't worry about the cat. There's other things. Hide the groceries. Fuck them. Unbelievable. God damn it. Eats all my stuff, uses all my plates. I, I, the pee on the bed is nothing. <laughs> this is from Michael Christensen. We, three guys, arrived in Syracuse happy, jolly, and looking forward to seeing Louis Black. <laughs> Alcoholic but responsible individuals. <laughs> as, as we are, we booked a room at the local Marriott only to be met by the very unshaven female receptionist. <laughs> now, I, for the life of me, spent five minutes wondering, how, what, what's an unshaven female receptionist? <laughs> With, to be met by the very unshaven female receptionist with that. So you guys are sharing a room and have a great night, wink, wink. This was at two in the afternoon, what the fuck? Just because we're cheap doesn't necessarily mean we're batting from the same side of the plate. of that activity would simply be impossible to carry out in Syracuse where the cold is preventing any kind of neurological contact with your nuts. <laughs> it's so unbelievably and unforgivably cold and windy, it's difficult to imagine how civilization ever 
never imagined they managed to establish a bridgehead on I-95. <laughs> Hope you agree and look forward to hearing you. Well, I, I certainly think it's cold as fuck. It's why I don't live here. <laughs> and then I've been further, but Buffalo, fuck. Except, you know, the good news is, is the way things are going, guys. You're... This, this global sh shit, you know, if we don't, if we don't get it together, you, you become really warmer and warmer each year. No kidding. And uh, the insured birds will be dropping from the sky every time you appear. But it'll be, it will, it, it's going to get, you know, but you're going to be right on the, you're going to hold on to that, hold on to your house because it's going to be worth a ton. People, people in Alabama will be coming up knocking on your door. You, you can count on it. I mean, I'm so good at, at these kind of predictions. But that's it. That's it for the seating. I just want to thank everybody for what they wrote in and, uh, and to tell you that it was, it was a, a, a real pleasure spending time with you here in Syracuse and that uh, uh, join us tomorrow night for The Rand is Due, which will be coming to you live from Huntington. Next week we're going to be in Atlanta. There's still some great seats for that show. We're also in, uh, there are. There's fucking, you can, you can sleep on some of the rows. So, uh, if you're looking for something to do next weekend, it's certainly a place to come to. And uh, I just want to thank you again. It's been a pleasure being, it's been a pleasure. Thanks to all of you for listening to my rant cast. If you have a rant you want to get off your chest, send it in to me at lewisblack.com forward slash live. You can think of it as therapy or whatever you want to think of it as. Just let it rip. And I want to thank the true stars of our show, the ranters and the splendid rants they gave us. Lewis Black's Rantcast was created and hosted by me. Aha, Lewis Black. It is produced by James Salkine. Our theme song by Chris Lane. Executive producer, Ben Brewer. Executive producers, Matt Kleinschmidt and Robert Kelly for the Laugh Button Podcast. And most of all, thank you, all of you who ranted so well on this show. <laughs>